Hello, family. Shabbat Shalom. Welcome back to Heart to Heart here at a Hope International YouTube Assembly. I am your shepherd or your host, Prophetess Alicia Yahoo, also known as Pastor Z, Evangelist Z, Prophetess Z. Ha! Ah, but better known as family. Now I like also known as Emma, Mama. So many call me Mama. So many call me Grandma. And I just love it. And beloved family, when I say all those different titles, it's not to, to brag. It's like sometimes people confuse like, well, are you pastor? Are you prophetess? Or, or are you evangelist? Are, are, are you missionary? And my answer to that is like, I've been ordained by Yah and by man in, in all those offices. The most recent one was pastor, the first one was evangelist, and second was prophetess. Although the Father Yah called me prophetess way before I even knew what it was in 1992, and I rejected it. I was afraid of it. I think I may have mentioned it before. And so, and he finally caught up with me and said, now you are to walk in the office that I called you. And I think that was in 2014 that I was ordained prophetess, but it was 2009 that I was ordained evangelist. I mean, but by man, it was 1992 when the father called me that. And before even uh, seeing pastor, I rejected that because he hadn't called me that. And my overseer, uh, Apostle, in a, my American overseer, Apostle Sandra Kyle, Coward, said that you, you know, that uh, it was put, uh, put on her heart by the father to ordain me as pastor. And then when I heard the same thing, and then yes, I agreed. Because I don't want to do anything or be anything that he hasn't called me to be or do. So that's why I say that. Because sometimes I'm confused <laughs> what to say. In Africa, they call me prophetess. And here in Taiwan, many are calling me pastor now, some are evangelist or missionary. So I'm just going to, how about if I just say what I feel, what I feel to say to prophetess Alicia Yahoo, a.k.a. Pastor Z. How about that? Okay, that's over with. Ah, I just felt like I had to clear that up because some people are like, what is you? What are you? <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, as you can see, I'm just jittery speaking. Da, da, da. That's when I don't really know what I'm going to talk to you about. I know that the topic, I know I'm supposed to talk to you and ask you about what are you living for? That's what Baba Yah, Ab Yah, put on my heart, the Father. But, you know, and I was saying, you know, okay, and that was this, uh, this morning. Say, okay, well then I'm just trusting you to give me what to say. And this is like stepping out on faith, coming before you in the camera and just, I'm open to receive what he has to give me. And since I have made the commitment and the vow to, and the vow to, to the Father and to the viewers, I will not rerun, retake, retake. You know, that it's like whatever I have, that's what it is. And my, the object of this is to try to give you the heart of the Father. From his heart to your, through my heart to your heart. That's the purpose of heart to heart. And, and, and you know, um, I have a, I was looking, I said, Father, you know, I think I've even I've done a video on this before. And I went through looking at my videos, and I have, think I have one. What um, what purpose are you living for? Uh, yeah, I think that's right. Something like that. Yeah, what purpose are you living for? Something like that. But uh, I'm obedient. I want to be obedient. You know, if you believe that that's what the Father said to you, then that's what you should do. And sure, sometimes you may make a mistake. I have made mistakes. But one thing about our, our Father... One thing about Yahuwah, Baba Yah, mm, the Almighty, the Almighty Heavenly Father, if you make a mistake doing what you truly believe that He told you to do, He's not going to punish you for that. He looks at the motive of your heart. And He says, and to Him it's like, well done. See, He's not like us, like, okay, well you made a mistake. I know you tried to, you're trying to do good, but that's not what I said. I mean, if you truly believe and you're, you're trying, and that, that's what you hear. Because, I mean, hearing the Father comes trial and error, right? You're going to step out of some things you believe you heard. You know, 
And sometimes you're like, well, I'm not going to move until I'm sure that I'm sure that I'm sure that I know. I know that I know that I know that I know. That I know, that I know. And sometimes you hear something and you don't hear anything else. You're like, okay, I got to make a decision to move on what I believe I heard or I make a decision to do nothing. Either way, I'm making a decision. So here I am. And what are you living for? I, you know, I was asking myself that. I, I mentioned before, I used to, I was living for um, the des desire for fame or to do big, important things even before in the entertainment business, and even at first, because I thought that's what it's supposed to be, even in the ministry. But I'm so, I'm so not with that anymore. You know, I, I want to do what he wants me to do. I want to know his purpose for my life, and I want to complete that purpose. Now I believe I'm living for, to complete his purpose for my life. We are on an assignment. You are on an assignment. I am on an ass assignment, whether you know it or not, whether you believe it or not. Maybe you think, well, you know, well, I may have had an, an assignment, but now I'm, I got these kids and, you know, I'm at home. I mean, I, everything's just past the time. No, as long as you are breathing, your assignment is still alive and well. Your YAH-given heavenly assignment is alive and well. And do you know, beloved, that you have messengers sent from heaven from the throne of Yah to help you complete his purpose. They know what we're supposed to do better than we do. They know what we're, and they were going to help us and assist us to do what the Father put us on this earth to do. They're not gonna help us do our own thing, you know, and they've been helping us before we even knew them because the Father knows who's going to choose him. You know, I was studying today and listening to ministry and found out, you know, when he said he, he, when we were predestinated, you know, like we're predestinated, like that predestination. People think we're pre predestined. Why? Those there's some people that are destined just to die. There's some are destined to be with the Father. No, He knows what we're going to decide. He knows. So, uh, what we're going to do later? No, we don't. I had no idea. Be a minister? I told my friend, mm -mm, not me. No, no, no. I wanted to. Later, I wanted to sing, worship, and, and worship dance. That's all I wanted to do. I didn't want to speak, but that, you know, it's, <laughs> it's not what I want. And he put me in a place to do speaking. speaking. Now I know why I went through public speaking. In school. I took public speaking in school, and, I, you know, I went through speech therapy for like six, seven, I mean, maybe seven years school because I had a really really bad lisp and heavy 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 southern accent with a really 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 bad lisp and I had to go to speech therapy you know I, and you know people used to <laughs> when I came we came to California they would laugh because first of all I would say uh-uh I live way we live way down yonder <laughs> with a lisp and they used to say let me hear you talk let me hear you talk and people made fun, and if, and I was sucking my thumb, thumb too, so that made it worse. But you know, I, I had no idea that going through speech uh, therapy and then uh, taking um, public speaking that I was going to be a speaker because I never wanted like speaking. I just I wanted to sing, so I thought, okay, well I need to con control my tongue. I can't be singing, 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 singing like that. <laughs> so, but. I didn't, I said, you know, when I got on, got on stage, said, just start the music. I don't want to talk to anybody. I don't want to say anything. Just let me sing. Because when the music came on, I came alive. But just standing there in front of people is like terrified, you know, wouldn't smile. But now I see that his purpose was for me to speak, to be his mouthpiece, to be one of his mouthpieces. It wasn't my choice. Not my choice at all. But I'm grateful, I'm thankful, you know, that he's trusting me with that. And to come before you today, he's given me courage to come before you not knowing what I'm going to say, but just trusting him. And, and on, on that note, what I should have done, done in the beginning, let me stop and pray so that I can hear him. Oh, Heavenly Father, Baba Yah, I thank you. I come before you today 
on, on behalf of your people, your children here, that you put me on this heart to heart to speak to through me. And Father, I say, here I am. Make me usable and use me for, for your name's sake, for your exaltation, for your honor, for your purpose. I want to know your heart today so that I can give it to my, to my family here, to our family, to your children. So I'm just trusting you, Father, that whatever comes out of my mouth today, that you will be able to use for them. Whether I think it's important or unimportant, you have a purpose. And it could be for one person. It could be for, it could be for 70 or 80, but it could be just for one. Whatever it is, I say yes. I say yes to your will and to your way. I say, here am I. Hine, hine ni, Yahuwah alua. Hine ni, hine ni, use me. Hallelujah, 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 hua, hallelujah. I magnify you, you are worthy, you are worthy. You are worthy to be magnified. You are worthy to be praised. In the name of my darling salvation, Yahusha HaMashiach, the Messiah, whom the world has been calling Jesus of Nazareth, the only begotten Son of Yah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. All right. Okay, beloved, what are you, think about this is, this is a rhetorical question. What are you living for? It's time for us to just be living to complete the purpose for our life, to complete our Yah-given, heaven-sent assignment, to realize that we're all on an assignment. And I don't know about you. I'm pretty sure you would. Don't you want to come before him? And he said, assignment complete. Like Paul said, I've finished the race. I've run the race. Or like Yahusha said, when he was hanging on that tree, it is finished. In other words, he completed. Or when the Father, when, when after creation, he said, it is finished. To complete our assignment. And how do we know our assignment? Well, if we don't spend any time with him, if we don't get in his word, and you got to pray, and you you got to research. I know a lot of people, they you know they just stick to, they just read the sixty six books, in in the in the King James Bible or whatever or NIV. But there's more, there's more. You, I mean, there there are many books that were taken out. Don't you want to know why? I mean, aren't you even interested? Are you just content to? to read only what someone else put there for you to read, even though they gave themselves more books. You know, and it's, you say, well, they, 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 they're, they're, they're fake. They're, well, how, how do you know? Yeah, they're, they're, how do you know? Well, do you know that there are 13 books? I think it's 13 books that are mentioned in the Bible, which is in the Sefer, because Bible means, uh, anyway. 13 mentions that are not in the book, that are not in there? Okay, well, let's take for one is well known. The book of Joshua. J-A-S, uh, J-A-S-H-E-R, I believe. What is it really? Yasser. That's mentioned in Joshua. Say, this book is, this is written in the book of Joshua, and it's also mentioned in another place. But that book is not there. Don't you, if it's mentioned, don't you think you should read it? Don't you think you should read the book of Enoch? And you say, okay, there are mistakes. Yeah, there are mistakes in King James, in a lot of them. And there are some intentional things. Do you know that, I said it in an older video, where it said, baptize you in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, that that wasn't originally in there, that was injected in, that was placed in there, that your original text was baptized in the name, they put in the name of Jesus, took the name of Yahusha out, Baptized in the name of Jesus, Yahusha. That was in there. Did you know that? So they, I mean, and, and then the fact that I said almost 7,000 times that they took his name out, 
and put Lord and God in there and over a thousand times of Yahusha. So this just everything being exactly the, the word that, that, that throws that, out, that idea out because they changed some things because they don't want us calling on his name to know his will. I mean, I, I don't get me wrong. I read it, but I read the Bible. I read the Sefer, I, and I pray. I take it to Him. But see, and 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 so many of these Christian cliches and religious sayings, I, I'm just through with them. You know, again, I was listening to the one about he's, Him being in complete control of everything. That I mean, that's that's an abomination. That's an as I say, a doctrine of devils. It's, it's a doctrine of devils. Is to make you, you know, it's to make you not fight against Satan to resist. You know, and when it says, submit yourself unto Yah and the, some, uh, resist the devil and he will flee. And to resist means to actively fight against, not just, no, 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 Satan, no. No, no, it's fight again, like, no, get out of God. Push him out of the way. To actively, you know, fight. We have to resist. But search for the truth. He is the truth. He's the way. I mean, so we need to, and his spirit is the spirit of truth. I want to know the truth. And I tell you, in my quest for truth, I have to really be careful and pray because it, it it can make you discouraged. I can see what happened to my son and other people when they got searching for the truth and you get, because while you're looking for truth, you get a lot of lies too. And knowledge, see, knowledge, just a lot of knowledge don't mean it's the truth. See, a lot of knowledge is not right. So, I mean, a lot of things they say, it's knowledge, but it's wrong knowledge. That you can get discouraged and you can get confused. You can say, but what is true? What is real? If this is not right, what is? You know? But there's some people that just, like, well, you know, I don't want to know. And they just keep on. Like, I can't, I can't, if I find something searching that is not true or in question, I can't, I can't go on with it. Like, I, I, there was a, a, a pastor that wanted me to, speak as the be at the come to their church on what they say do you see oh during Christmas and I just I say well let me tell you I say I do not sing Christmas I will not sing Christmas songs or talk about any kind of Christmas thing I just I don't I'm not going into what you call the house you call the house of God I'm just not going to go in there sing those songs and they're like look I said because it has nothing to do with him I'm not going to sing them anymore I mean I used to and as you know and a lot of the places, that's what they want. They want me to sing those Christmas songs, or they, or even at the during that time, the December, the the weddings that I do, they want me to sing this song. But you know what? I'm just not going to do it. It's probably, it'll probably cut me from being invited places and, uh, and and singing. That's how I'm. I mean, that's how I make my living. I don't make my living collecting tithes and offerings. I, I said that before, you know. And well, he. He supplies different ways. He either blesses me or he sends me some um, decent work or, he, or I'm called to speak. But I I believe it, so I, I just can't, I can't do it. Not that, you know, I can't do it anymore. Huh, where am I going? <laughs> I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know, I don't know. What I'm doing, what I believe he said to do. Yahuwah, I will obey you. Have your way, have your way. He just told me to tell you, to tell you that he's not leaving you alone. That he has work for you. You are on an assignment as well, he says. You were put on this earth, he said, to do something for me. I will not let you down, says Yah. I have a purpose for your living, for your breathing. You were given work here on earth, and my assignment will be done, whether it be through you, or the next one I will choose. I am mm. with you always, says Yahuwah. 
I know when you're sad. I know what you believe. I know what you think. I know what you say. Hmm. But I am the one who really loves you. saying this last time? I don't want to say this now. He says, the way you are, I've created you for a purpose. Whatever you were given will help your assignment. How you look, how you like to dress, you know, and I see that I as a young child, I liked African clothes. I, you know, and I, I had an African dance troupe. I was a professional dancer first. And, but coming out, I mean, my mother, they couldn't understand where I got that from and why was I so fascinated with African clothes and, 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 and Eastern things. Well, little did I know, I mean, I love the, the Indian from India thing, the Chinese, little, little did I know I was gonna be living in Asia and then going to Africa going back and forth to Africa and, and fi founding a foundation in Africa. This, this is from uh, Uganda. One of my spiritual daughters here, went to, they went to Uganda and the father didn't allow me to go this time and they brought this back for me. And, and most of the other things you see, all the, all the other African things you see except came from uh, uh, Nigeria except for one. It came from the Congo, uh, from another spiritual daughter. But, uh, I'm sorry, I just, I'm sorry, Father, did I mess up? <laughs> Started talking, I mean, when he said, even the way you dress, I'm just saying, yeah, the things I liked, I didn't know I liked them, because that were put in me because there's a purpose for my assignment. Otherwise, how could I live here in Asia with, without family? You know, not, not coming with a close friend, I didn't come with a banner. How, how could I be here if, if it wasn't something that was already put in me to be able to de deal with it and do it? And I, and I had a love for languages, you know? I had a love for languages, Why? I mean, so anybody else was like, I don't, they don't even want to try to even think about singing in Chinese. But I, but I wanted to, you know? I like singing in all languages. So, Everything, things you like, there's a purpose for it. Even singing, I want to be a singer. When I danced, when I was three, I couldn't sing, but I could dance. <laughs> After my club foot was straightened, <laughs> it wasn't through surgery yet. I, now I know it was him, but I, through real strong willpower, I straightened my foot out. But it was all for his purpose, for his assignment. So I just decided, I'm living only for his purpose and to complete my assignment. Assignment, Because there was something, they had this, um, the pastor had a, uh, a ministry and it was like saying, in so many days, you know, set your goals and your purpose and in so many days, look at that, you know, do a, you achieve your purpose and reach your goals. And I had to ask, say, Father, what, what, what's my goal? <laughs> I didn't have, you know, all the things I had before, I didn't have it anymore. I did, the things I used to like, I don't, I didn't like anymore. I don't want anymore, you know what I mean? I love when, they, when I'm called to speak, hallelujah. But if they don't call me to speak, hallelujah. Praise be unto you, yeah. If they don't call me to sing, hallelujah. I, he said, he said to me, just trust me. Don't worry, just trust, trust me. And when I just trust him, it's all right, because if I didn't, I would wonder, how am I gonna do, where's the next money coming from? How am I gonna do this? How am I gonna do that? I live by faith. And that can be very scary, but it is so exciting. You know, it's so exciting to see, okay, how are you gonna supply my needs this, this time, Father? Who, how, where is it coming through? What job is it coming through? Who is it coming through, what? And he never ceases to amaze me or never, and he never fails me. He never fails me. If there's someone, you're thinking, 
you know you're supposed to do something, but it takes stepping out on faith. You don't have the funds. You don't even have all of the the the, the, the knowledge of what you're supposed to do. You just you just gotta step out. You you you. If you know what you're supposed to do, you gotta step out and then trust him. Like when I came to Asia, I didn't know one word of Chinese. I didn't know what I was supposed to, after the country, I didn't know anything about him. I just stepped out. And it wasn't easy, no, no, no. I spent a lot of nights crying, when he, because I didn't think I was good, I didn't know I was gonna have to stay here until he told me stay put. And I didn't know anybody, I spent a lot of nights crying. Crying myself to sleep, but he has, it's the best thing I did by going through those hardships staying here. And now it's been, when I first came, when I first came it was 2001, but I come back and forth. In 2003, that's when he told me stay. And I would, then I would stay six months and then go back to America for a while and, you know, stay. So I would spend half the time in America. Half, every two or three, three months I went home for a while like that. But after 2006, I've been living here permanently since 2006. <laughs> and uh, out of the... Out of 2003 to 2019, it was 2006 to 2000, uh, was it 2014? That I had, that I had a, 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 a I was working for, from, uh, for eight years I worked for a multi, multi, uh, Christian multimedia company or TV. So, out of all the time, eight years, that's the, that's the time when I had the, the, the steady job, steady salary, they had paying the health, health insurance and all that stuff, you know, and, but the rest of the time has just been totally on faith. And it was, it was so, it was good when I got the salary and the, the you know, and they were paying my health insurance and, uh, I mean, it was coming out of my salary, but, you know, everything was, housing, everything was taken care of, what I missed being on faith, it's like, it took, I, you know, you get comfortable. I got, you get comfortable when everything is taken care of, you know. It's like, okay, you, it's like, you don't need him as, you feel like you don't need him as much. Because before, I had to ask him for everything. I, I, I don't have any food. I need food. What job should I take? How much should I charge? Where should I go? I had everything. Every single thing I had to come to him. And he would answer him. So, I kind of, you know, you I was glad to have the security, what you, what you call security. I say fake security, because anything can happen. But I missed the faith thing. Well, as of 2014, I've been on faith again. <laughs> on just faith again. But it's, been, it's, it's exciting. It can be trying. But you know, trusting him, I wouldn't have it any other way. Because I'm a, living, I'm a living testimony that he is good. I'm a living testimony that he will sustain you. I'm a living testimony that he will preserve you. You know, at 60, like I said, at 65. And it's not because I've, took care, I've taken care of myself. No, it's his mercy. It's him keeping me to complete his assignment, his purpose, his purpose, because I want to complete his assignment, his purpose, purpose. So he's, he want, he's helping keep me, preserve me, and keep me alive. And one of the things I'm called for is youth here, and most of my friends, the one that friends are following, they're youth. They're all the the people that hang out with me, or that that love me, that the most, or they're in their most, they're in their twenties and some and thirties, and then and and below, <laughs> you know. Very, I don't hang out with anybody my age. Not because, I mean, we're so different. And that's, yeah, I don't. I mean, I know some uh, <laughs> my age, but the ones that I spend time with or communicate or work with, they're all their 20s and 30s, and, 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 and then some, for me, like my Facebook. <laughs> my Facebook, I have from left, starting from 11 years old, friends. <laughs> and my biggest fans are from 11 to 20s. How many grandmothers can say that? I think it's as part of the assignment, you know. So I, I realize when I watch the video, I say, you know, so much. Like, what? It's like other people will say, um, or uh, I say, you know. You know, I didn't realize how much I say, you know, you know. <laughs>
Well, forgive me. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, is this, have I, have I, am I finished? He wants me to welcome you to his heart today. To his heart. People say, yeah, I, I do. I hear, I hear him. I hear voice. You, you hear him too if you listen. And I just step out on faith and speak what I believe he says. What I believe he says, and believe me, I'm scared of being a, a false prophet. A false prophet. But you know, same thing, prophet is prophet. And it's very scary because sometimes he tells me to tell people things precisely or tell someone that like someone you were you were uh, they were looking for work or prayer that uh, you will get a job um, next Tuesday I mean I thought it over and said like, mm, I wouldn't say it and then I heard him say say what I tell what I said say what I said so I just had to step out of my face and say it scary but guess what they got the job they got a job them following Tuesday and there have been other things that he said you know and has there been some things that I said that didn't happen yeah but if I believe if you believe he said something and told you to do something, and you don't do it, you're in straight up disobedience. Even if it was, even if if he, if he didn't say it, but you believed he did, then that's a sin because you believed he said something and you didn't do it. Sometimes you know you have to be willing, you have to be willing to make a fool of yourself or to humiliate yourself, doing what you believe he said do. Or saying what he said. You have to be, you know, that's what he means by if you save your life, you lose your life. And if you lose your life, you save your life. He, that's what he's talking about. And then sometimes we, we try to save ourselves because, well, you know, I don't want to pray for them. I'm not going to pray for that person in the wheelchair because, you know, what if they don't, you know, they don't get up? I mean, that's, I mean, they were born and they were born, born uh, where they couldn't walk or they were born blind. I used to think like that. No, I pray for people that have pol born with polio braces and no muscles in the leg, I'll pray. You know, because you believe it's like and some of them look at me there in amazement like, wow, you know, other people won't won't even try. And see sometimes and it's hard to pray for some of those people like that because they have been that way all their lives, their lives, so they can't even envision themselves being whole. To envision themselves walking and stuff. Because sometimes I mean, because it's already done. I mean, it's never him that wants anybody in the wheelchair. It's never the father that wants anybody crippled or sick. Mm -mm. No. That's not his will. So if, they don't, if, if I pray for a person in a the wheelchair, they don't get up. It's not him. It's either them or me. It's a, either a lack of faith or something that they have given, the, given over to the devil, or, 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 or the open door, to have a right to keep them in that wheelchair. But he wants everybody here. He, he, that's why his son paid for it. Yeah. So anyway, uh, I thank you for your patience, for bearing with me and listening to me on this video. I hope there was something that you received. I hope that you received something from the Father's heart. You know, he's perfect. Sometimes my delivery is not. And I don't I'm sure always succeed to give his heart the way he wants or you know you can like other video you can get full of yourself or you self can get in the way are you because I'm constantly fighting out the the, the enemy spirits to trying to, to you know to deceive me and distract me or get me to say something that's wrong but I do know this I'll say it again if you're not living to complete your purpose and your assignment that was given by the Almighty. What you're living for is worth nothing. If you're living for fame, if you're living for your children, if you're living for your husband or your wife or your career or your money, it's worth nothing. You can't take none of them, none of it with you. You can't take your family with you when you go, your money, your, your, your business, nothing. All you can take with you is what you've done here on earth. What you've cooked, whether your assignment, whether you complete it or incomplete your, your assignment. That's all you can take with you, your deeds here on earth. So if 
you've given up and think you have nothing to live for, today is your day. Today, you know that you have a lot to live for. You have an assignment. And your, your assignment could be in your family. Your assignment could be in your neighborhood. Your assi you know, just seek him. Say, Father, I want to complete my assignment. I want to complete your purpose. Here, let, let me pray with you before that, before I go here. Here, just reach out and in agreement with me. Hmm. Oh, Father, I bring these wonderful people, your children, my family. I bring them before you, those that are watching now and those that will watch later at any time, those that are celebrating your sh the Shabbat, those that are, that are watch on a Tuesday or whatever day. I bring them before you, Father. I pray for, the, for a, a knowing, for them to know your assignment, to know that they have an assignment by you, that they are still worth something, that you have not, you are not finished with them, Father, that you have given them, you have not given up on them. That is why they're still living, they're breathing. As long as they're breathing, you have something for them to do. Oh, Father, I pray that right now, that today, that they receive and the joy and say, I have a purpose. I am on an assignment. And that they look for it, that they seek it every day. Because daily, what is your assignment for me today? What is your purpose for me waking up today? How can I serve you? How can I please you? Whom can I bless for you? Who would you like to bless through me today? This is my prayer for your children. Oh, have your way with them. Have your way, Baba Yah. Abya, have your way with these wonderful people and let your perfect will be done. For I know that it's good. We know that it's good. For Yahusha is our shepherd and we shall not be in want. Oh, magnificent, magnificent Father. Almighty, almighty, have your way. Let the power of your anointing the power, your, that your presence, your tangible presence go through me, through my hands, into each home, into where each person that's watching, be it on computer, cell phone, iPhone, iPad. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let their assignment, let their assignment be known and I pray for a, a desire a supernatural desire in their hearts to complete their assignment their Yah given some say God given their Yah given heaven sent assignment and that they know that they are more than conquerors that you supply every need that I can be an example to them to show that if they just trust you and not worry you'll take care of everything you'll either you'll send it to them or you'll send someone to give it to them. You'll send someone to give it to them. Or you'll give them away. But you're the best father. You are mother and father. You are our parents. Provider and provision. This is my prayer for them, Father. Oh, Father, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for each one watching today. Mm. In the name of Yahusha. Mm, help, hallelujah. Oh, how I hope you heard his heart. Oh, how I hope I gave his heart to you. Mm. Bless you, Baruch you, in the name of Yahusha. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hua, hallelujah, hua. Hmm. Yes. In the name of Yahusha. Blessed be the name of Yah. Blessed be the name. Okay, beloved family. I'd like to remind you that you're here at A Hope International, at Heart to Heart, here at A Hope International YouTube Assembly. And we don't ask for tithes and offerings here nor do we pass the collection plate. But we do ask you to pass the YouTube link and to subscribe to the channel. I want to let you know that I'm so glad that you are here. And as I say, you may not like this video or another, but there are many videos. There's over 100 now. And you can see from when I first started, you can see the transition. I've been transitioning 
how I've come from saying Jesus and Lord and God to Yah, Yahusha, you know, Yahuwah. And I mean, it's the same, same thought. Hallelujah. Don't forget, when you say hallelujah, you are saying praise be unto you, Yah. His name is Yah. Okay? All right. So, don't forget, you have an assignment. And it's fresh. Your assignment is fresh and anointed today. You have a fresh start to pursue your assignment with the Father to know and complete your assignment and your purpose. Hallelujah. Thank you for being with me. Shabbat Shalom. Peace be with you. Ping an. Tadja ping an. And I love you. Wo aini. Wo aini man. In Chinese it means I love you all. Okay. I'm going to say goodbye, but you know, you know what you got to get. You got to get some sugar, sugar. <laughs> Here you go. Mwah. Sugar. Sugar. Mwah. A whole lot of sugar. Bye, family. Bye-bye.